Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are going to take a look at Service Bus. So what I want you to do is type in Service Bus at the top here. What's interesting is that this is the old icon. They have a new icon. So just realize that there's some inconsistencies there, and that's not my fault, that's Azure's fault. Um, but the first thing we need to do is create a namespace because a service bus is kind of like, you know, a storage account where you can have uh, a variety of different kinds of storages. Well, you can have uh, more than one type of messaging system. And so we have our traditional one, uh, like event messaging, similar to storage queue, but with first in first out functionality. And we have pub sub via topics. So what you'll do is create a new service bus namespace. And I'm going to create a new resource group and call this the AZ204 um, service bus. And we'll say message, or sorry, queue, because we're gonna do a queue and then we're gonna do a topic separately. And for this, I'm going to call the namespace um, service bus queue to keep it simple. We'll let it launch wherever it wants to launch. And notice there are multiple pricing tiers. The, depending on the tier affects the functionality. So if we do basic, we're only gonna have access to Q. We're not gonna have access to um, uh, topics. And so this is totally safe and fine to do. Um, like even if we did premium, it's fine because it's based on your consumption. It's not based on, um, you know, you just having it holding around. So we'll get the basic one here and we'll go to networking. I don't think there's anything interesting there. We'll go ahead and review and create and we'll let that create, click create again and it's deploying as that is deploying, which will not take too long. What I've done is set up a private repository here. You'll probably see me use this throughout the course. It's literally an empty repository because I already have the code done. I've been doing the follow alongs and documenting them here in the free Azure Developer Associate. But when you're doing follow alongs with me, you should do them, with, uh, do them from scratch. And then if you need to, you can reference the stuff here. So um, I have this uh, separate repository. I have a Gitpod account, which has a free tier. You can totally do this in your own Visual Studio code on your own local machine. The reason I'm doing a Gitpod is because I always wanna show you how to set up the CLI and those other tools. Um, and when you launch Gitpod, it gives you a blank environment. So I'm just gonna launch that up there. As that's going, we'll go back here and take a look and see if this is ready. Just hit refresh here. It is still going, but we already have our environment. And while that is going in the background, I want to go install the Azure CLI. So we don't even have a single file here. I'm just gonna say readme.md so I can see what is going on here. Maybe we'll just dump things in here as we go. I'm gonna go get the Azure CLI uh, Linux because this is running Linux Ubuntu uh, here. So something you should always check is like, uh, what Linux version Am I running? If you're on Windows, of course, this is gonna be different, but even Windows using the Windows subsystem Linux is using Ubuntu as well. So what I'll do here, I'll go to the first link. Nope, that's not the one I want. Maybe the second one. There's usually like a command here I can run. Uh, which Linux version am I running? Let's try this one here. It's usually like, so maybe it's this here, cat proc version. It really does vary based on what you're using. And so in here, I'm gonna go file, uh, or sorry, terminal, new terminal. We'll paste that in there, hit enter. And so here it says Linux 5.13, Ubuntu 11, uh, 18. So I know that this is Ubuntu. Yeah, I don't really like that one there. Um, let's try this instead because this just doesn't read very well. There we go. We're running Ubuntu 20.04. I already knew that, um, but uh, I just wanted to double check. And the reason that matters is that when you're installing the CLI, it might matter what version you're using. So we're gonna go here and I'm gonna go to Linux and the instructions might vary. This one says 16, 18, 20. So they're all the same here. And we have this one liner here that we'll install. And what I'll do here is drop it in here and hit enter. I'm not sure if this font is too small. So while that's going, I'm gonna see if I can bump up our font here. I'm looking for the terminal font size here, terminal. Let's just say 20 here. There we go. And so the Azure CLI should be installed. So I'll just type in clear. So let's say Azure or AZ to run it. 
Looks good to me. So we'll type in Azure login. Um, I don't want to log in with um, that way. I want to log in with device. So we'll do AZ login device because if you're on your regular computer, you can just cl click a button and go to the browser, but I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to have to do a device login. Device. Well, I'll have to do it the wrong way first to do it the right way. So I'll hit enter because the problem is if I go here, it's going to go to localhost because it's trying to launch in my local machine. So it does that and that's no good. And so here it says, do the AZ login use device code. Okay, so that's the one I really wanted to use. So hyphen hyphen use device code, enter. And that will give us a code. So what we do is we will need uh, this link here. So I'll have to expand that to here. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab that code. Continue. And so now I go back, this will authenticate. It'll just take a second here. Close the tab here. There we go, maybe I have to close the tab. Uh, and so now I'm authenticated, so I should be able to uh, do whatever I want. Um, what I need to do next is create ourselves a message queue. So we'll go to the resource here. And notice here in entities, it always says queue. Now, if we had, uh, other than the basic, the standard plan, then we would see topics here. We'll go click into queue, click create a new queue. I'm gonna call it my queue. We have some options here. The queue size can go up to five gigabytes, the max delivery count. So this is the maximum deliveries uh, time to live. That is how long they live in the queue before they are dropped out or they are dropped into uh, a dead letter uh, a system there. We have lock duration. So the set the amount of time a message is locked for other receivers. You can enable partitioning. Uh, that's pretty complicated, but we'll go ahead and create our queue. And so this should be pretty darn quick. There is our queue, we'll click into it. And you'll notice that there isn't really a way to view messages. There's not a way to add messages. Uh, here we have the service bus explorer, uh, which I guess technically you can send and receive here. I had not noticed this before, at least it was not working for me. So I suppose we could send a message here saying like, hello world. This literally wasn't here last time I checked here. Um, and we can go ahead and just hit send. Okay, and notice here it says there's one active message and we can receive it, say yes. And so it says it received the message, it's not showing us the answer. So I guess there kind of is something here. I guess they're still working on it, but uh, mostly what we're gonna have to do is uh, do things programmatically. So that is why we have this account. So what I want you to do is open a new tab here and we're gonna type in Azure Service Bus Documentation because we're gonna grab some code there, modify it, make it our own so it's a bit easier to work with. So here I'm in the Service Bus, we'll go to Tutorials. Um, I'm not sure if this one is the right one. Azure Service Bus Documentation Queue. Mm, it's the same thing here, but this is, doesn't look right. What is Service Bus? I mean, it is the right page, but it had a couple tutorials here uh, that I had here. So we'll type in like Azure Service Bus uh, tutorial topics. Sometimes things aren't where you think they're supposed to be. Okay, we'll type in Service Bus. Seems like the same page again. Ah, it was quick starts, sorry. So we have tutorials here and then we have quick starts. So under the quick starts, this is where I was finding uh, the example code that I thought was okay. Notice that we could do everything via the CLI. Um, that is not that fun. But I mean, this only uh, does the creation of it, doesn't necessarily do sending and receiving messages. Notice that we only can use code. So we'll use JavaScript because I think that will be the easiest to use. Uh, so I already have Node. Node comes pre-installed on Gitpod. You'll have to figure that out for yourself on your own machine. Or you can just use Git Pod as well because it does have a generous free tier. What I'll do is go ahead and paste on in 
this command. It doesn't seem to want to paste today, so I'll hit copy. And then we'll go back here and go right click, enter paste, hit enter. And so what that will do is, is install that library. If you're not very familiar with Node.js, package.json is the package manager, and this is showing that this requirement is there. I want to install one other thing uh, called .env. This will make our lives a lot easier um, for Node. It comes for different things, but I just want it for um, JavaScript here. So then we'll do npm install .env hyphen save. That's just a safe way for us to pass along our environment variables. And so now both of these are installed. So what we'll do is we'll go back over to this code and we'll scroll on down and they have one called send and they have one called receive. So what I'll do is create myself a couple files here. So we'll have send.js and we'll have receive.js. And then what we'll do is go ahead and copy, this is the send code. So we'll put this in the send.js file. And then down below, we have the receive code. And we will paste that on in there. So I'll just make this bigger and we'll take a quick look here at what it's doing. So what this does is it imports the SDK for service bus. We need to set a connection string. We need to set the queue name. Here is a bunch of messages that we are going to be passing along. Here we establish a service bus client, very common in all SDKs to set up a client first. Then we are creating a um, sender. And then here we are doing uh, create batch messages. So it's a way of sending messages in batch very efficiently. So we have a for loop here. And uh, so it says there's a batch. And then it says, try to add the message to the batch. If it's not, wait until it's ready, then send the message. Okay, so pretty straightforward for that code. Receive is gonna be similar. So connection string, queue name, create that client, create a receiver. And then from there, we will set up a handler for the receiver, an error, and so then we'll subscribe and we will listen for the message and handler. So even though we are doing queues, it's called a subscription still, so just don't get too mixed up with that. What I wanna do is just make sure that we're passing our environment variables in safely, our configuration. So this is pretty standard or uh, good uh, best practices when working with any language. But the idea is you don't wanna hard code your values. So I'm gonna do process env, uh, and we'll do connection string here. And then we'll do process env, q name. This is the way you grab environment variables in JavaScript for every language. It's a little bit different. Okay. And I believe these are the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that there like this. And I'll paste that on in here. And I want to load environment variable. So I'll make a new file here called .env. This is all part of that env dot thing that we're looking at, env dot. I'm just pointing that up again here, or dot env, you gotta get the right one. Because we need this line here, require dot, e, uh, dot env config, that will load the environment variables. Uh, it'll load it from that env file. So we will go above here and hit paste. And then we'll go to the receive here and do this as well. And in here, we need to define these. So I'm just gonna copy this so I don't have to type it out by hand. We will paste that on in here. And so I just need the queue name. And connection string, we'll just say equals and then equals. So our queue was called my queue. And then we need to go grab the connection string. So I'm just thinking here, this is probably, yeah, it's at the namespace level. And we'll go to shared access policies. Notice it's called shared access policies. And remember when we were doing the storage key, it was like called key access. So it's totally different interface. This is what I'm talking about where um, Azure is inconsistent. We're clicking on the root managed shared access key. Probably you could create your own so it doesn't have full privileges, but for this purpose, we're just going to use this one. On the left-hand side, we have a primary and secondary. We're gonna use the primary one. And we will go back here and we will paste on that value in. So I'll paste that in there. Notice we don't have to do double quotations here. It should uh, already escape in double quotations, but when we were doing the CLI, when we did the storage accounts, 
that wasn't something that we could do. Um, so we have these two values here, so they should get loaded when we use them. And this should all be good, so we'll type in node, send JS, and hopefully it just works. Fingers crossed. And so it sent a batch of messages to the queue. So we'll go back over to our queue here and see if we can see anything. And we'll click into here. I'm just trying to see. So there's 10 active messages that are here right now. And so what we'll do is we'll receive all those messages. So we'll go up and hit node receive JS. And so this code is now receiving those messages from the service bus queue. And we're just gonna wait here because it takes time for whatever reason to uh, finish here, but we'll give it a little bit of time here to figure out that it's done. Still waiting. There we go. And so that's all there really is to it. So that is Q and we will do this again, but next time with topics. So what I want you to do is make your way over back to your resource groups. We'll find the one that we just created, which was uh, this one here, AZ204 service bus Q. We'll delete this service group, hit delete, delete. And there you go. And as always double check to make sure that you've uh, for sure deleted that stuff. And that's it for service bus Q. We'll do topics next, okay?